Since they're not directly accountable to the taxpaying public, EU politicians and bureaucrats have understandably been more than generous to themselves in pay and perks. This is the much talked about Brussels gravy train. And here's my handy guide. This is the shopping center. But this is all for politicians and bureaucrats. It's not for members of the public. No. So you get your own hair salon and your nail bar. Get your nails done. Get your nails done. There's a sauna, there's a massage parlor as yep. well. Why would they not want to stay here living a life of luxury? There are a number of people here who are paid more than the British Prime Minister. Ah, oh, you might say, but how many? Four, ten, a hundred? Ten thousand. There are ten thousand people here paid more than David Cameron. That's one in five of everyone who works for the EU. If you're an EU official, there's the relocation allowance, the household allowance, the family allowance, the entertainment allowance, the private health care allowance, the private education for your kids allowance. The health care allowance includes free Viagra. You would have thought that would come under entertainment. If you're an MEP, you get an extra £250 a day for being good enough to turn up, another £41,000 a year on top of that to cover phone bills and computers, and another £225,000 a year on top of that to cover staffing costs which in years gone by often meant spouse or children. And to cap it all, they've decided to charge themselves a special low rate of tax. But it's not just the officials and politicians who benefit. The EU diverts great rivers of taxpayers' cash to the tax-consuming middle-class intelligentsia in our sprawling publicly funded establishment. The European Union is very good at purchasing the loyalty of powerful and articulate interests in all the member states. When we hear great public institutions, quangos, museums and campaign groups, waxing lyrical about the EU, we have to remember the EU gives them vast amounts of our money. The EU gives shed loads of our money to local authorities and to universities and to art groups and opera companies. And that then provides this chorus of noise in favour of the European project. Every charity over a certain size is getting money from Brussels. Every NGO. We see EU largesse effectively buying opinion. You know what we see here is really a racket. It's become a, a very good way of taking money from the general population and handing it to people who are lucky enough to be working for the system. The EU likes to advertise its generosity. Here in the North East, for example, European Union investing in your future. Isn't that good of them? I wonder where they got the money. The Sage Art Centre at Gateshead, we're often reminded, was built with the help of EU money. But what you're not told is that if you live in the North East, for every one pound that comes from the EU, you have to pay the EU two pounds thirty in tax. <laughs> 